Le pide usted dos palabras. Diré algunas ideas mías sobre la invención o invento. El aparato que usted manipula es maravilloso porque reproduce la figura movible al mismo tiempo que emite el sonido de la voz. Cuando con el tiempo se perfeccione este invento, el mundo quedará sorprendido ante los cuadros vivientes y parlantes que ello exhibirá sobre el tiempo. La ciencia ha acrecentado el paso acelerado de los adelantos modernos. Por medio de la ciencia, conservamos la salud e inclusive devolvemos la juventud a los que le han perdido. La ciencia también ha impulsado los inventos que se dirigen a la destrucción del hombre por el hombre. Estas dos tendencias contrarias todavía nos dicen que la cantidad de la animalidad en nosotros es muy grande. ¿Cuándo podía la ciencia perfeccionar aparatos que reformen y renegeren a los hombres? ¿Cuándo podrá nuestra humanidad decir que va camino de la perfección moral, de la fraternidad de todos los hombres, de todos los pueblos, de todas las razas y de todos los credos? All each of the world, of the world, will depend upon your ability to save this continent from invasion. For I feel perfectly certain that as long as this republic are free, they will be able to make all the liberty-living peoples of the world maintain and preserve their own freedom. Administration. Taong sang libo, siyam naraan at apat na putat lo. Isang taong singkat, buhat noon hanggang noon. Nanay tayo natin, ang bagong republika ng Pilipinas, sa hirap na ito na dinadanas ng ating bayan, na handa ko, na magpatuloy sa dang makikita ninyo na aking inilalagdan sa pangatiran na nilulog ng aking mga kasamahan sa pamahalaan upang ito maging marat maging dalipan sa gitna ng isang tigbang ngayong ibaraw sa isang sinubo sa gitna ng kasuduman sa gitna ng kamatayan Filipinos are grateful and have a deep affection for America. Although the color of our skin is brown, the temper of our minds and our beliefs is almost identical with yours. The Philippines, in government system and tradition, is a replica in miniature of the United States. That has been transplanted to a land 10,000 miles across the seas, the seat of American democracy. If a prosperous and free democracy can be built in the Philippines upon the ruins of war, the prestige of America and the American way of life will be raised to towering heights and the millions of people of the Far East will look to us and to you as their mothers. Por el cálido recibimiento y por los honores e indispensados. La legendaria la lentería hispana ha rebasado sus límites, dando al mundo la más hermosa lección de diplomacia porque toca al corazón. Nada alarga tanto mi vanidad de padre y ejecutivo de la nación como el pensar que el tránsito fugaz de mi hija por tierras españolas 
ha sido la chispa que ha encendido la hoguera que ha de alumbrar el destino de los dos pueblos. and daughter can now reclaim the one-time mechanic and World War II hero who rose to become constitutional head of the infant Philippine Republic and her 20 million people. And so it is that as I promised all of you, my countrymen, on that fateful morning of September 23, 1972, when I announced the proclamation of martial law, which had been signed by me before, with your support, placing myself, my life, and my family's life and honor on the judgment of history, that when the time came, when I must or we must end martial law, and that time could not be foreseen then, I would be the first to move and initiate the termination of martial law. It is after deliberate, sober, judgment and soul searching that I come before you and say it is now time to terminate martial law. You see at that time Mount St. Vincent did not have a course for political prisoners so I did not get that instruction here. <laughs> anyway, as I said it was my husband who taught me all about political prisoners, on democracy, and on human rights. And so this is where my learning went into full gear. My presidency was ruled by the following imperatives. Respect for and the empowerment of the people. Respect for the integrity of the Constitution. Respect for the independence of the courts and the constitutional commissions. Respect for the separation of powers and building up professional military and police organizations. President Ramos's term will be over next year. It is true there are some people who would like him to continue given the economic gains, but I have categorically stated my position that I am against uh, any changes to the Constitution at this time because such a move will be divisive. And uh, on the few times that President Ramos and I have talked with each other. He has told me that he will step down when his term is over next year. Filipinos and Americans stood for freedom in Bataan and Corridor, in Korea and in Vietnam. Now we stand for peace as treaty allies, securing the, securing the stability of the Asia-Pacific region, and as members of the United Nations Organization, promoting global peace and development. And we have grown together. We have moved from the age of colonial empires through the carnage of world war and the trials of a cold peace to a more promising new era of global growth, prosperity, and social equity. From the business community, 
market reform and productivity, social reform and democracy. These are the pillars of our new era, where human liberation and human development, as in the Philippines, are proven to work best when applied together in pursuit of the common good. Through it all, we, Filipinos and Americans, have remained bound to one another by the love of freedom, the adherence to democracy, and the respect for individual and community that distinguish every free people. Malupa ang lagay ng ating ekonomiya at namimiligo ang kapangyaman ng ating bansa. The problems we face are such magnitude that to require nothing less than heroic and concerted action. We must move upon them as a single community bound together by common rules that we all agree to respect. I order the Presidential Commission on Good Government to go forward on all ill-gotten wealth cases with all the evidence it has taken 12 long years to collect. No more delay. My fellow Filipinos, we come together tonight as we approach a hallmark of democracy for our great nation, the smooth transition of power to a new leader. We have just come through a historic election. It was open and it was modern. As a result, we were able to declare winners in hours and days rather than weeks and months. The face of politics in our nation has changed forever. Kahit kaliwat ka na ang ebidensya ng pagbabago, mayroon pa rin kontra sa Dangmatwin. Ang hirit nila, babagal daw tayo. Kapag sila raw ang naging pagulo, sigurado gaganda ang buhay sa mga medyo maedad po ang isasagot natin. Ah, ganun. Sabay taas raw po ng kilay. Para naman sa kabataan, iba na raw po ang sagot nila sa ganong pahayag. Ang tugon na ang uso ngayon eh, eh di wow. Paano nila gagawin ang mga pangakong yan? Ang sagot nila, basta. Nasaan ang detalye at konkreto mga plano? Basta. Paano nyo ipapatupad ang inyong mga pangako? Basta. Pakiradam yata nila nadadaan sa basta-basta ang solusyon sa ating mga problema. Wala pa rin talagang gamot na naiimbento para sa mga nagbubulag-bulagan at nagbingi-bingihan. I challenge you now. I challenge the Catholic Church. You are full of shit. At mabaho rin kayong lahat. Corruption and all. Yun lang pagtanggap ninyo, paggamit, paghingi ninyo ng pajero. Hindi na kayo nahiya sarili ninyo. Ang kamahal-mahal niyang putang ina niya, maraming Pilipino wala pang kain. Kaya sabi ko, one day, pag hindi na, I will write the book, Hypocrisy. Lahat yan, politician, nagmamakalinis, manwari, so, pero kayo ang starring dyan, I will start from the day nung bata pa kami.